Hey, what up, guys? And oh my god, I'm gonna talk about Ori and the Will of the Wisp. It's gonna be some spoilers, so if you haven't finished this one yet, uh, yeah, I guess you can click out if you <laughs> don't want to be spoiled. Also, if you're planning on buying this, um, I'm gonna strongly suggest that you don't. Like, it's not a good game, especially compared to Ori and the Blind Forest. Uh, I will much, much more highly recommend you getting Blind Forest uh, Definitive Edition if you haven't played that one already. And if you have, uh, save yourself the disappointment and your money from buying this game. It is not worth it. Uh, I don't want it to leave like a sour taste in the, your mouth afterwards. As it kind of did to me, this uh, game is not very good it is not good whatsoever also i'm really disappointed from the ending the ending shows i guess what's supposed to be the end of this franchise like ori turns into a tree and the rest of your gang naru and gumo and i guess i forgot the name of the bird uh, kind of dies out of old age like you sort of see like a time lapse and well, I, they don't you don't see them die out of old age but you see them grow older and they're weak and then at the last scene you don't see them at all you only see Ori who's a big tree now and also releasing a leaf like in the beginning of Ori in the Blind Forest so I don't know if they're hinting on a new one but it's just not Ori uh, which I don't understand why they would make another game but choose to have another spirit um, I yeah I don't know um, but I, I got strong I strongly wanted to make it was, uh, I am so disappointed with this game because this game took every step that Orin Blind Forest didn't take. It is a big, big, big step backwards. They went the complete opposite of the first game in pretty much every single way. And I'm not even joking. You could compare literally everything game by game and you can see that they have gone the opposite of pretty much every single choices that you know that there is between this <laughs> like I don't understand why but they did and it can be great for some games but when your then the, your first game was so fucking well made and amazing to play and just amazing in general I don't see why you would take a different approach to do your sequel if you can even call this one a sequel because you aren't really recognized at all by anyone in here no one talks about what you've done you don't see your works or anything it completely starts over in a new forest which by the way is freaking huge this is like massive look at this it is huge and I guess you could say like, oh, some of these use dungeon mates. And yes, and no. <laughs> so first of all, I don't know if I can call the wheel spring, I guess what it's called here, a dungeon. It's a windmill, which is basically supposed to be the Ginso tree from the first one. Except, as I said, it takes every... <laughs> Uh, it changes everything. It is completely opposite from Ginzo Tree, apart from you cleansing the water at the end of it. Instead of having these puzzles inside of it and you getting skill in it and you know the escape scene, this one has you go inside and spin some wheels. Green pole lever, you turn some cog wheels, and that's it. That's all you do. I don't understand why, but that's what you do. 
and you do it until I guess you've turned all of them and boom that's it you cleanse the water and also that's the first thing you do in this game basically so you clean up the water right from the get-go which is like what it makes no sense but yeah that's what you do it's really really irritating not really irritating in the way you're cleaning the water right away I mean that's pretty good I guess but that they will basically take the idea from the previous game and especially Ginster Tree which everyone freaking loves especially the escape scene and simplify it to the ground yeah I guess it is because it's not technically a dungeon or a, a level I, I don't know what you would call these this one down here that's a dungeon I guess water level and also in this game you got boss battles and escape scenes both pretty much at the same time you can meet the boss and then all of a sudden it was you just jump to an escape scene to then fighting the boss again I don't I'm not I don't understand why you can be one area and then you have to run to another area to fight the boss I'm not sure why at all uh, this game went more combat focused than the first one because the first one's combat was more optional uh, for the most part uh, that was fine for me I really like just the platforming that was amazing the platforming the puzzling it really didn't need uh, to be a combat game at all but this one went there and that is why it has boss battles as well but for a game to be more combat focused this game really has shitty combat I can show you a clip of me doing a challenge these um, there are challenges in this game here's one of them these are combat challenges you basically go up to shrine you activate and I think it's like three or four waves of enemies spawning you have to kill them all and then you get some money at the end and yes you heard that run uh, right there's money in this game which you use to spend uh, to buy skills and upgrade skills there's skill there's still skill trees that you can get like you did in Ori but for the most part eh, it is not like the dungeon takes clever like advantages advantages over your new skill it's basically like all right now you can move on a little bit and that's it like you barely even use them outside of it and yeah no it's not that very great at all there's like one skill I found that was pretty cool and that was dugging through sand it has sand and you can use burrow through sand so you can go pretty quick that was kind of a niche idea uh, that is one was dashing on the water which I mean you move really quickly <laughs> and it was actually pretty fun I quite liked the water level because of it uh, and also it produced it looked pretty cool but other than that there wasn't really that much else I liked from this game which is irritating obviously uh, so you see these areas and you think like it's gonna be loads of content contents in this game and no most of these areas are used way forwards I guess to different areas and other holes more for side quest uh, uh, things I guess the items you're supposed to collect and I don't get it there's also a skill tree down here which I still haven't gotten yet there's a skill tree there which I haven't gotten yet meaning that most of these skills aren't necessary I've already beaten the game and I haven't gotten this skill tree I, it's locked in there and I don't know how to get it at all and this is not a dungeon or anything it's just there you can also see these blue lines these are portals this whole area was for a side quest this I don't know how to get this skill tree maybe there's a lever around here somewhere that I missed I'm not too sure 
but I can't find it. And I'm sorry if I'm <laughs> switching around. I'm accidentally pressing the right click to fil uh, change filter. Uh, oh yeah, this is also the map if you zoom out. Uh, really good map, I would say, because I I can't see jack shit. Okay, there we go. If I zoom out, yeah, I'm not zoom out. I can move around, but still, even now, I can barely see where anything is. Where can I press to like actually see things? I don't get it. And also, there's two underground. There's some up here, as you can see. Quality and graphics of this overworld is really, really bad. Like, really bad. I don't understand it. Oh, yeah, there's three then. We start on the ground. Don't understand this at all. The first one was pretty good, simplistic. It was just all you needed. Here, I think they tried to go 3D, but it just doesn't work completely. Oh, yeah, speaking of this one. You see this skull thing, you have to open it to move on. I'm not entirely sure where it is. Uh, you have to get up on his head, on that skull, so whatever it is, head, in order to open it. But I could not, for the love of me, get up there without triple jump. And triple jump is a skill you buy. So. I guess it's more optional so but I couldn't get up there at all so I had to grind it cost 2200 spare charge I think there are and at that time I think I had 1600 so I had to grind f for like 600 more and by doing that I had to kill some ads and maybe try to get these I still haven't collected everything and it took a while and it was so boring uh, at the end, I find like one spot where an enemy just kept on respawning, and I just killed him over and over again until I was, until I had enough. Uh, by that time, I was just so tired and bored of it. But you know, I kept going. Yeah, that is probably some way to get up there. But I tried so many times getting up there with double jump, but it didn't work. So I had to like go buy buy uh, triple jump. So yeah. No, this game is not that great because I I don't know if I explained it already. Maybe I have. This is like my fifth take on this. That is because my others didn't really record my voice. Uh, this game just throws you in here. I don't exactly know where you spawn <laughs> when you first start. I don't remember. But after a cutscene where you fly with your owl and get lost in a storm, you land somewhere here and then everyone knows that you're looking for your friend. I have no idea how they know, but somehow they know. And that's it. Then they just like, oh, go, go find your friend. And then you're free to go wherever. I think then someone tells you about all of these areas. I don't remember exactly. I guess it's supposed to be sane. Because she's there, but she put up some markers around, like, four different occasions. But that's about it. And then it's like, alright, go wherever you want, mate. And, uh, for the most part, like, in a way, yes, that's not too bad that you can choose your own path. Instead of having more linear, like the first one. But the problem with that is that you can't really have any story in there or scripted events for it or anything. Because you don't know where people are going to go first or second or anything. Uh, it's just weird. You, can also, you can't also really make any real challenges in those type of dungeon areas. Because you don't know what skills they have by then. It's just boring. Most of these are used to get to one area. There isn't really many puzzles around or anything like in the first one. It doesn't really take too much advantage of your skills at all. The most one you're gonna use is Bash. Like, that's the one you're gonna use the most throughout the entire game. Uh, that's. I think that's it. <laughs> I think that's like the one you're gonna use, as I said, the most. 
and more other skills are just combat skills these are optional or not optional but you get some of these you can put them on is debuffs oh yeah there is actually some debuffs like this one is a buff and a debuff increased damage dealt and taken by 15 percent so it's a buff and debuff so it's buffs and debuffs you can put on uh, cool i guess you also have this one here's some of your skills uh most of them attacks there's one Go attack. This one is a weird an attack. You just push enemies back with that. This one uh, you basically only used in one area, and it was a cave, which was dark, and this one would lit up the area. Otherwise, you die. This one is useless. Useless, but it's your primary attack. You can't. You don't need to have it on, but it doesn't cost any energy to use. This one is useless. It's a bow. It's really weak. This one is the best, but it costs the most. Spirit Smash is basically your stomp, but you can also swing around with it because it's a hammer. So yeah, that's what is useful. This one is really cool. Uh, Light Burst, you get no matter what because you need it. Also, I don't remember what it's called in the game, but I know it from Orange the Blind for the Deluxe Edition. Or Definitive Edition, not Deluxe, Definitive Edition. You get this one from one of the newer area i think it is where you get to know Nara's backstory more it's the one where you toss that light or ball thing which you can bash on except that this one is shittier so uh shadow energy to heal speaking of healing during boss battles uh no health will drop at all unless they spawn enemies then you might have a chance of getting from enemies and yeah i accidentally walked in there uh also energy it there is one energy container that spawns or crystal if you want to call yeah energy crystal which has a random depending on the boss battle it has like a different respawn timer on it and it's only one in the entire boss room which is really irritating so if you use some of your more powerful attacks which cost the most you're gonna run out real quickly and at the end of it you just have to sit there and uh, like dodge a lot of attacks until it re the crystal respawns uh, or use your weaker attack it's not that very fun at all also the indicator of where the boss is gonna attack it's just so bad and poorly designed there is a lot of undodgeable attacks so you have like half a second of reaction time and even others is like okay cool uh bashes doesn't really work most of the time triple jump also doesn't really work most of the time uh, not just during boss ball i'm not saying during boss ball but in general this game is pretty buggy uh audio has died on me a couple times also gets this weird static uh i seen some enemies sometimes the main villain which is an, uh, an owl again because they thought we really liked owls i mean we only like kuro there we go <laughs> i had to look it up i'm sorry uh kuro the owl but they try to make the same thing here where this one had a tragic backstory the only thing is that it doesn't work because the storytelling in this game is very few very few and far between far and few between is that how you say it uh, and also because it has already been done in the previous game <laughs> when i saw in the trailer that it's gonna be a bird again that's gonna be your main antagonist or villain i think it's antagonist uh i was like oh god why why does it have to be a bird why can it be anything else why does it have to be a bird and it kind of acts the same in a way and she's also it's an owl except it looks a little bit different because it got i don't know dust or something i don't know rocks around it it's okay uh, it's just why did it have to go around the same path with those i don't get it also her backstory 
uh, this one I don't even know its name is that she was born after I guess the first game you know when I guess the spirit tree's light killed everything I, I'm not sure exactly how it killed or why it killed when it was looking for Ori or calling for Ori why that would kill uh, birds but it did I'm not entirely sure but apparently she, because of that all of them were dead apart from her obviously since she was born she had like rocks around her she got a little bit I don't know, I don't know she got so weird and because of that some people rejected her or some other owls I guess uh, I, I, I don't know and that's about it like almost killed myself uh, she got reacted, rejected by other owls because she looked different I guess and that's what made her evil that's it that's the backstory okay that's um <laughs> what why so because you were born with some disabilities and some people didn't like you you just go around and killing everything you see like i can understand kuros because her babies died and uh, but yeah this one is like oh my uh, she got liberty rejected because she looked different that that's literally it she got that that's it that's the whole backstory of her uh, they're trying to put it off like that like oh she's being misguided or whatever like kuro or not although kuro wasn't really misguided or anything don't say blinded by hate but yeah here it's like oh misguided or something it's really dumb uh no this game in general isn't that good at all like it's boring most of this is just walking and trying to figure out where the fuck to go and when you finally get to like an area you like i got here and then boom it's a roadblock you're stopped so you have to like walk all the way back trying to figure out another place to go on the triple block because you can't do anything only to then find a place where you can actually do something and then be like oh i got a skill that could help with this area over here i saw so you have to go there and it's just not that very good at all like in or in the blind forest you had Zane again who's telling you where to go and also if you were to deviate from the path you would like kind of get stopped not super fast but quite fast like a lot faster than you get here and you can be like oh I can't get past here I'm gonna come back later and once you get a skill you'll be like oh yeah I remember this place I could use it over here and then you go there and that's it here's like okay what what were they doing what can i be here can i not be here i, I don't get it <laughs> for example over here this is the water level this is the one i got to last obviously after this one or before this one second last i guess i could say that but apparently on here there's like this bridge up there you're sup it's when you're up there it says hold shift well that's for me uh in, in the air to glide and apparently you're supposed to run jump and glide all the way over here but first time i did it i missed and i fell down here i think like you couldn't make it like it was too far i think i tried a second time but then i tried from here and failed and because of that i didn't think i would be able to make it over here only to then make it like much much later into the game that i uh, seen that you actually can make it and it was really irritating because i mean it's a pretty short dungeon and it does give you bashing on the water which is pretty nice bashing and dashing i think it only gives no water dash which is pretty nice i mean it's not something that you needed through anywhere else because that's i think that's the only place with actual water <laughs> like that and just for uh, for it it tells you like nothing you really get is that needed so yeah no uh, i yeah <sighs> since it just drops you down without any really information 
I, I, I'm, I'm going to be honest. Yes, I skipped a lot of conversations. I like to skim through them because I couldn't be bothered. And yeah, maybe someone were telling you exactly what to do. But look at all these NPCs up here. All of these are talking about NPCs that could say stuff. Uh, some sells you stuff. These are the map guy, which I accidentally just bought one. I think it was here. Yeah. The last one is the one I bought by accident. The previous one, I never bought them. I was like, no. Because you need those money to buy skills. <laughs> so I was like, alright, cool. But uh, otherwise, you have to like go around and talk to every single NPC. And after this area, which is like a spider, spider cave, you see there's three spiders here. There's two of these, or actually one, he's down there. Then there's another spider that will spawn here. As you can see, there's a spider there. And if you go down, talk to him. And talk, uh, if you go down and talk to him, all he says is like, oh, this is the best place here. It feels most like home. And that's it. Nothing else. So why does he spawn there? Like, when you see it, it's like, oh, there's someone there. Maybe I can go talk to him. Maybe something will happen. And no, nope, nothing happens. Uh, also, side quest about, uh, I got a pouch, which, like, they told me to give it to someone who's going to be an adventure or something. And the only person I've heard mentioning adventuring was, I believe, was this guy near a cave. He's like, oh, I'm no, no, uh, or it was it? One of these two, who was like, oh, I'm excited, I feel like adventuring. But nope, it's not the person you give it to. Meaning, you have to go and talk to literally every single NPC around to figure out who needs it. How fun is that? Especially when one NPC, literally the only NPC, uh, or one NPC that actually mentioning it, isn't the guy you are supposed to give it to. He's like, w what? For all I know, it could be one of these spiders. Because th that's what this game is going for. I, 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 it makes no sense, but yeah. No, this uh, isn't that very good of a game. This is also supposed to be more of your safe house. You can actually upgrade it, but it isn't really needed at all. It's just there to make the game feel bigger than it is. Um, no, it also then advises you to go around and look for item to actually give like more material. You need to find seeds for one person, garlic rocks for this one, or garlic ores for this person who's actually down there. I don't know why there's a symbol up there, but he's down there, and it's just not very fun. I hate to, you hate to see it. You really do. I'm gonna see it. I'm sorry if it's just been weird mumbling and rambling instead of an actual review, whatever, but I can't. I'm too disappointed. <laughs> too distraught. <laughs> I, I'm too dumbfounded and baffled that this is the end of it. And even if it isn't the end of it, it just baffled me that this is their second game uh, how do you go from a masterpiece to a disaster did you uh huh usually it goes reverse to show you like oh you've grown you now have honed your skills or so but this is the complete opposite like complete opposite Again, I'm sorry for just mumbling and stuff, but I'm just I, I, I ex tell, uh, speaking the truth and expressing my feelings, I guess. I love the first one, and that is not going to uh, cloud my judgment here or effect or anything. I'm not going to be like, oh, at least they tried or they tried something new. Uh, I can, I can kind of see what they were going for. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to be honest and say that this game is straight up trash. It might sound harsh, but sometimes, you know, that's what you need to hear. You need to hear the harsh reality. Otherwise, you will never improve. It can't be improved or anything if you sit there and like, oh, you can't just baby talk them. It has to be a truth. 
and if they are to make another game i hope they go back to the style and the direction of ori and the blind forest i really really hope they do that because this was not fun i think two hours in i made a, a video that was around two hours which i then quickly deleted because my second game through i was done i was done after it i hated every second of it i was bored i was done i felt like actually going we found it two hours in and i didn't want to play anymore with or in the blind forest freaking five minutes in and i want to continue i right after making my first video of or in the blind forest i wanted to continue i didn't want to close the game in fact I, that's actually what I did right after I finished recording part one I started on part two because I couldn't put the game down it was that fun I loved every second of it but this um, I was just like mate uh, I, I don't want to continue because I got stuck because the game doesn't really tell you what to do and I felt like oh I have to record for maybe more than two hours now or so then edit away every freaking thing of me just looking around for things to do and I was just like oh it's not gonna be worth it and not just for like it's bad for that for making videos or whatever but just playing it in general it's just not fun because of all the wrong choices I'm just gonna say it, wrong choices <sighs> hey, I'm just gonna Stop mambling or rambling. Mambling? Mam what the hell is mambling? We're rambling and mumbling and stuff. Uh, but anyways, yeah, I'm, I'm disappointed. And thank you so much for watching. See ya. So if you want to know what the battling is in this game, I am going to show you me doing a battle challenge where you, I think it's four waves of enemies spawning, different type of enemies to kill them obviously and you get some money at the end so i'm just gonna show you or you're actually seeing it as i'm speaking and i find this one to be the most effective <laughs> trying to do anything else will mostly stay, take a little longer to kill them you're gonna take damage during it and die i actually died quite a few times because it's very hard to actually dodge their attacks while simultaneously trying to kill them they spawn quite a bit of them, some flying, some ground, um, yeah, so I just decided to do this and it works really well actually. Apart from when the flying enemies come, because uh, the timing gets so off to where they will be on up in the air whilst I hit the ground, um, but when I'm in the air they will hit the ground and it, was just, it took a while, but yeah, as you can see, yeah, it's not that very exciting now, is it? <laughs> but yeah, I guess that's what you do. Uh, apart from boss spells, I would highly recommend using the spear if, if you have it, uh, do buy it. And the uh, boomerang, or I don't know what the name of it is, but that one is also good, so yeah. But anyways, see ya.